Welcome, uh, everyone. Uh, it's so good to have you here. So good to see some faces we haven't seen in a long time. Uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it has been a strange year, uh, and to use a word that we've probably all heard more than any other word, it's been an unprecedented, unprecedented year. Uh, and, and for many of us, maybe Christmas this uh, time around will be a little different. Uh, and maybe not as festive or, or as loud as some other years. But I think for all of us, it will be an opportunity to celebrate and be thankful for the simple things. Um, just being able to have a meal with your family at home or a cl- close group of friends. And even just the fact that the people close to you are safe and well during these times. Those are things that we can be thankful for today. And I hope that's the sort of Christmas you get to enjoy. But into these strange times that have been dark and lonely and long for many of us, the Christmas story, I think, is almost better than never before. Because while our hope that things might return to some some semblance of normal has been quite short-lived at times, Christmas tells us that our hope is actually fulfilled because God is with us even today. Let me read uh, this, the Christmas story from you, and this is Matthew's uh, gospel. So this is Matthew chapter 1. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So the birth of Jesus speaks of something wonderful, doesn't it? God has come down into our world. He has come down into our struggle, into our darkness. And that's the foundation of hope and Christian hope. God came down to us, and he's with us. He experienced life's struggle, and he rescued us from it as well, even by dying for us. I pray that this hope would be made real to you this morning by the grace of God. Let me invite you to join in song. Uh, We were able to enjoy one or two weeks where we got to sing uh, out loud together, Uh, but the advice, obviously, has been not to do that for now, Uh, with the new cluster of cases. So as Angelina and Amy lead us in song, you can hum along if you'd like, or you can follow the lyrics and sing along in your heart. So we'll uh, sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Loving Father, thank you for this great and uh, great day and uh, that we get to celebrate Jesus. And thank you for that great news of Christmas, that Jesus did come down Uh, that he is Emmanuel, that he is God with us. Um, Lord, let our praise this morning uh, resound, even though we can't sing out aloud together, let it resound in our hearts. And we know that um, our praise is mixed in with the praise of the angels and uh, it's mixed in with the praise of so many other believers uh, across New South Wales and across Australia and across the world who are praising you. Uh, because of the great news that Jesus was given to us. Thank you that Jesus came down. He was born in a humble manger as a helpless baby, as the saviour of the world. You kept your promise. You set free the captives. You rescued people from sin and darkness. And you rescued the world from death and decay. Thank you that in Jesus we have a saviour who was who is who lived tempted in every way and yet was without sin, and who humbled himself even to death on a cross on our behalf, so that we can approach you 
this morning with confidence to receive your mercy and your grace in times of need. Thank you that you are with us even now and that whoever calls upon your name will be saved. May the comfort and the peace and joy of Jesus be with us by your grace and by the Holy Spirit this Christmas morning. Amen. We're going to read from the Bible, um, and John uh, and sorry, Glenn will bring us a message from John. Uh, but we'll read from Genesis first. Uh, this is Genesis chapter one, verse one to five. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Let's skip over to John chapter 1. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 1 to 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and, through the wo- and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Thanks, Stephen. It would have been good to have the Apostle John preach to us today. Uh, But we've got the next best thing. We have God's Word. Actually, it's the first best thing. It's God's Word. And uh, more importantly, we have God's Spirit with us to help us uh, meditate on His Word and understand what He has to say to us here. I'm going to pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your love and Your care and Your goodness. We thank you that you are God Almighty. You are sovereign, you are king of the universe, so high above us. Uh, Without you making yourself known to us, we would never know you, for we are dust, Uh, we are people of flesh, Uh, we are made from the earth. Uh, But we thank you for the Christmas message, uh, which is that God the Son became man. He took on flesh so that we might know you. And so we come to you as people who have been abundantly blessed by your grace upon grace upon grace. Uh, Be with us now again as we meditate on your truth to us. Speak to our hearts by your spirit. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I'm a creature of habit, and some of you who know me may have worked out some of my patterns already. You see, every year at our Christmas service, I usually reflect on the word of the year for that year. 
know what the word of the year is every year, dictionaries put forward as a word, as the word of the year, a word whose usage dramatically increases over the past year, a word that kind of captures the mood of the time. So a few years ago, uh, we looked at post-truth, and uh, we looked at how that compares with the Son of God, who is truth himself. So we usually look at the word of the year and we compare it with the true gospel revelation of Jesus Christ. Last year, uh, we looked at the word cancel culture, and we contrasted the way people cancel each other out with our good God, who doesn't cancel us out, but he reveals himself to us in love. So this year, following my usual pattern, I did some research into the word of the year, and I hit a snag. According to the Oxford Dictionary, there is no word of the year for 2020, according to them. Uh, According to them, they said, uh, 2020 is a year which cannot neatly be accommodated in a single word. Uh, Caspar Grauwoth, the president of Oxford Dictionaries, uh, said, I've never witnessed a year in language like the one we've just had. It's an unprecedented, and it's a little ironic, a year that's left us speechless. 2020 has been filled with new words unlike any other. It's a, word that's le- a, 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 it's a year that's left us speechless, and yet uh, 2020 has been filled with all sorts of words that try to help us make sense of things. We've thrown more words at 2020 to help us understand what's going on, But none of those words has given us any comfort or any hope. Uh, We've had pandemic, we've had BLM, we'd have uh, lockdown, but none of those words have given us any reassurance or answers. So our collective confidence has taken a knock uh, as human beings, and uh, we are trying to find out what is the way out of the difficulty and the suffering we have. So today we're not going to throw yet another word at 2020. We're going to take a step back and look at the word. The word for all time. The eternal word who gives us light and life and truth. So in this year of upheaval, we're going to reflect on the word, the Lord Jesus Christ, who he is and what he has done. Uh, Let's look at the word. Uh, Our first point about the word is that the word is eternal life. Now read the first five verses with me, and it should be on the screen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Uh, You notice here that there's a reminder of the creation account The Apostle John is reminding us what happened at creation. At creation, God spoke and all things were created. By God's word, everything came into being. God is the same God today as he was back then at the beginning of creation. And the Apostle John is looking back and explaining, well, what happened at creation really came about through Jesus Christ. The Apostle John knew the Lord Jesus Christ, and he knows who Christ is. Jesus is God the Son, and he's saying all that happened back at creation really came about through Jesus Christ, because Jesus is God the Son. Jesus is eternal. At creation, God's Spirit hovered over the waters. The earth was dark and formless. Remember the creation account at the, in the beginning? Dark, formless, void, and God spoke. And when God spoke, he filled the earth with uh, light and life. And here the apostle John is saying, well, Jesus is the light and life of the world. Jesus was back at creation, bringing all things into being, bringing all things to life. And Jesus is the man who died on the cross and rose again. Jesus is the source of life. He was back at creation. 
He died on the cross and he was resurrected again. He is the source of life. After all, all things were made through him. Jesus is the source of eternal life. Now, there's much excitement in recent uh, months because of the news of the vaccine that's on the horizon for Australians too. And we all rejoice that there is another means, effective means, we pray, of suppressing the pandemic and reducing the death toll. We all rejoice and are grateful that we live in a country that... uh, Besides the hiccups and bits of confusion here and there and rush legislation, we are very blessed to be in the position we are in compared to other countries as well. We have much to be thankful for. However, you don't need fancy statistics. I mean, we've had a year of statistics all the time. You don't need fancy statistics to remind you that the the mortality rate of the human condition is 100%. We are all going to die eventually. Uh, We cannot vaccinate or self-isolate our way to eternal life. The Gospel of John is telling us that Jesus is the source of eternal life. He is life. Um, Over the last year, I've conducted at least four funerals, which means at least four people closely associated with our church family has lost loved ones. And next year, I'll conduct four more. Now, I know I'm not supposed to talk about death. Uh, Death is uncomfortable. Uh, According to one sociologist, Jeffrey Gora, he wrote an essay called The Pornography of Death, and he says that Death has replaced sex as the unmentionable. And I don't mean to try to sound morbid here, but I only mention death to remind us of the eternal hope and promise of life in the Lord Jesus Christ. All this death ought to remind us of the hope of eternal life that's in Christ Jesus. So over this past few years, I I bought a few books uh, on death by Tim Keller, and I've been giving it out to family and friends because death reminds us of the hope of life eternal in Christ Jesus. Uh, Tim Keller writes, Rather than living in the fear of death, we should see death as spiritual smelling salts that will awaken us out of our false belief that we will live forever. He reminds us when you're at a funeral of a loved one or friend, he says, listen to God speaking to you telling you that everything is temporary except for God's love. Uh, Today we are reminded that Jesus Christ will give you eternal life if you believe in in him, because in Christ is life eternal. Uh, Let's look at our second point. The word is the light of the world. Uh, Read verse 9 to 13 with me. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent nor a human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. So John's writing here that Jesus created all things. He created this entire domain of the universe. And he came into his domain, into this earth, but yet his own people did not recognize him and they rejected him. And the historical facts of Jesus' life tell us how people rejected him. I mean, they falsely accused him, uh, they crucified him. Even though he did miracles to show that he is God the Son, he healed the sick, he even raised a man from the dead to show he is the author of life, the true light of the world, the creator of the universe. Yet they falsely accused him, rejected him. He came to that which was his own, but his own people rejected him. Why do people reject obvious truths? You know, we can become too clever for our own good at times. We can have overconfidence in our own ability, and that causes us to reject obvious truths. 
Uh, for example, I watched an interview a while back with Rowan Atkinson. You know, Rowan Atkinson, the well-known actor, he played Mr. Bean many years ago. And uh, the interviewer was asking him, uh, isn't it difficult being a well-known actor? Because Atkinson's comedy went global because he didn't use much words in Mr. Bean, so it went to all parts of the world. So he said, isn't it difficult knowing, uh, being so famous and going to different countries and people recognizing you? And Rowan Atkinson said, well, it's not so bad when people recognize you because you can kind of wave at them and thank them or sign an autograph or whatever he does. He said, it's only awkward when people don't quite recognize you and then they begin to stare. And he tells a, a funny account. He says once he went to a car dealership and as he was buying parts over there for his car, uh, someone came up to him and said, you know, you, uh, you are a spitting image of the actor Rowan Atkinson. And Rowan Atkinson said, no, no, I am uh, the actor who plays Mr. Bean. I am Rowan Atkinson. And the guy insisted, no, no, you, you look very much like him. In fact, you can probably make another career for your, you can make a career for yourself being a lookalike as Rowan Atkinson. Uh, but you know that you're not Rowan Atkinson. And through the conversation, Rowan Atkinson in, kept on insisting that, no, he really is Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean. And eventually the guy left the conversation very angry, thinking that he was being deceived. Uh, we can all be too clever for our own good uh, and not recognize the truth in front of us. Uh, perhaps uh, you might be someone who thinks that Jesus Christ is, is so so similar to God. I mean, we all here today, we uh, are sympathetic to the Christian faith, whether you're online or here. Uh, we know that there's something about Jesus that reminds us of God in some kind of way. John is saying, no, Jesus is not like God. He's not the spitting image of God. Jesus is God Almighty, and we must receive him as such. He is the light of the world. He hasn't given us an option to accept him as someone who is similar to God. We either accept Jesus for who he is and recognize him for who he is, or we reject him. There's no middle ground here. Uh, C.S. Lewis uh, wrote, and there's a slide that captures his quote here, and I'll read it to you. I'm trying here to prevent anyone, really, uh, anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about Jesus. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That's the one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said that sort of things would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the level with a man who says he's a poached egg, or he'll be the devil of hell. He must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else he is a madman, or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit on him, kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about him being a great moral teacher, a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. Uh, the message of the gospel is Jesus Christ is God Almighty. We accept him and follow him as such, or we reject him. There's no this middle ground of lukewarmness, of accepting Jesus as, oh, he might be similar to God, but uh, he can't have control of my life. No. Jesus is God Almighty. He is the light of the world. We must receive him as such. Let's look at a third point. The word became flesh. Uh, read verse 14 and 18 with me. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Uh, John testified concerning him. He cried out, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the own, one and only Son, who himself is God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. The Gospel writer John is saying here that Jesus uh, not only came into the world, but he became fully human 
to reveal God's glory to us, to make God known to us. Jesus can heal us because he became one of us. He is God in the flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, God, the Son, is fully God and fully human. It's a truth that we cannot understand as human beings because God is greater than us. Uh, And so our finite minds can't quite understand how Christ can be fully God and fully man at the same time. So back in the fifth century, people are trying to work their way through this truth. And there's a man named Apollinarius, and he said, well, he's trying to figure out how can Jesus be fully God and fully man. And he came up with a kind of compromise. He said, well, Jesus had a human body, but he always had a divine mind. There was a false teaching. So uh, a man named Gregory of Nazianzus, an early church father, corrected him. He said, if Jesus didn't take on all our human nature in completion, including our minds, he couldn't heal us. And he came up with a theological principle that still drives our correct thinking today. He says, what is not assumed is not healed. In other words, Jesus assumed every part of our human nature so that he could heal us completely. The Son of God became flesh so that he could give us eternal life. That's the message of Christmas. The Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to give us eternal life. Have you heard of of Charles Steinmetz? Apparently, Charles Steinmetz was a very good friend of Henry Ford, the famous uh, producer of the Ford Motor Vehicle Company. And uh, he was, it was said of Steinmetz that he was, he was a brilliant engineer. Uh, it was said of him that he could build an engine in his mind, and if it broke down, he could repair it in his mind. So when he built an engine, it ran with precision. So one day at the Ford factory, the plant stopped, and all of Henry Ford's engineers worked feverishly at trying to fix it, and they couldn't get it right. So they called Steinmetz. Steinmetz came in. uh, He tinkered for a few minutes, flipped the switch, and everything ran perfectly smoothly. So Steinmetz then, uh, a few days later, Steinmetz sent Henry Ford a bill for $10,000. Ten thousand dollars. So Henry Ford wrote back to him, said, "Charlie, don't you think ten thousand dollars is a bit too much for a, a bit of tinkering?" And Steinmetz sent him a revised bill: uh, tinkering ten dollars, knowing where to tinker nine thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars. Uh, Steinmetz, the creator of the engine, knew exactly how it worked and where to tinker and how to fix it. The Gospel of John is saying that Jesus Christ is our creator. He made you. Uh, He knows how to fix you up. And he's come into the world to give us eternal life. Receive him today. Let's pray. Our good God, we thank you for the message of hope that is only found in your Gospel. Uh, We thank you that you speak the words of life into us. Uh, We are dying people. We are mortal people. We know that we're not going to live forever. But your gospel speaks eternal life to us. It promises us of a new birth where we're born anew uh, in you, that we could become children of God, living with you forever. And we thank you for that true hope. Uh, We, especially at Christmas, uh, thank you for not being a God who is far off. Uh, You you are so much better than us. You are transcendent, you are supreme, you are sovereign, but yet you have made yourself known. You have condescended in the most meaningful way where the Son of God stepped off his heavenly throne, took on flesh, became one of us so that he could heal us completely. We thank you for that good news of Christmas. We ask today that you would continue to be with us by your Spirit. We especially pray for those um, in our church family and also in our society who are having difficult Christmas. 
who are having a difficult Christmas. Uh, we ask that you'd please be the God of comfort who comforts them to them. Uh, remind them of the hope that is found in you. We ask that uh, through our joy and uh, our sorrows over the next few days, if they be, uh, that you'd remind us of the one hope that can never be changed, the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so today we give you praise and thanks that you are the God eternal who has come into the world. Uh, please hear our prayer because we pray to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you that uh, in a year with words that don't give us any lasting hope, uh, you have given us the word. You have given us Jesus, the word of eternal life, the word that became flesh, the word that, was the, that is the light of the world. Help us to recognize him and receive him as God, as you, as king, as Prince and as our Saviour. Lord, we pray uh, this Christmas morning for um, those in, a, in our community who um, are still suffering with the effects of COVID uh, more than we are. Uh, the Northern Beaches Cluster and the people there who um, are isolated uh, even more than we are. We pray that... Uh, the spread of the virus in that area and, and in uh, all of Sydney would uh, once again be uh, stopped um, and that we could, uh, restrictions could be eased again and businesses could open up and, and people could uh, see their family and friends and enjoy, um, enjoy their presence and their company once more. We pray, Father, for the New South Wales government and, and the health uh, the Department of Health, as they try to um, wisely guide us and, and lead us through these times. Um, Lord, would you be with them to give them wisdom to make the right decisions, um, to uh, have the best interests of, um, the, and, and of everyone and uh, the health of everyone at heart. And uh, may we be able to uh, follow their lead and follow their instructions and and their wisdom well. We pray, Father, for churches all over New South Wales uh, and Australia celebrating Christmas even though um, they are under lockdown and they are under restrictions as we are. We pray that your joy, that the joy of Christmas, the joy of Jesus and uh, coming to know Jesus would fill uh, those churches, will fill the hearts of all those who attend a Christmas service all those who hear the Christmas story uh, would come to know you and come to receive you and come to have everlasting joy and a solid hope in you. I pray for those who are spending Christmas alone, that those who have the ability would share their table and their house in a safe and generous way. And if uh, there are those who are spending it alone, Lord, that you would let them know that you are with them, that they are not alone. And Lord, may we rest in the truth and rest in the word, the living word that gives us life and light in this time. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I hope today is a special Christmas for all of us, and special because of the message of Christmas. And um, we've been reminded that Jesus is a, a solid rock, a solid rock of hope. He's the eternal word of life and light in a time of all, so, all sorts of words that don't give us any hope at all. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Forever I love